Hallelujah. Shalom. Greetings in Jesus' wonderful name to all you wonderful dear friends. Well, as you, as most of you know, most of you uh, know that um, I am in Israel right now. Um, the word of the Lord says that God, Yahweh, he married himself to the land of Israel. The land of Israel is not a mere piece of real estate. It's a spiritual entity that Yahweh himself is married unto. He cut covenant with Abraham and he in his sovereign authority allocated this land unto him and unto his descendants perpetually. This land belongs to the Jewish people. Hallelujah. What an honor, a glorious privilege that our feet are treading the very place where God incarnated in human body walked. Well, you know, it is a saying in Israel, when you go to Jerusalem, you always ascend. You go up higher in your life when you go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a glorious city built on the mountain top. Look into the Psalms. How deeply King David talks about the glory of this beautiful city of the king. You ascend, you go up higher, you take up new dimension in your life, not merely elevation, not merely next level, but you, you barge into the new dimension of your life. So here we are in Jerusalem, right now in Bethlehem, but we'll be traveling shortly to uh, many glorious places. You know, Israel, there are many open divine portals. Divine portals means the places where heaven always stays open. And this whole land is under the jurisdiction of Michael the Archangel. You know, the, 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 the moment my plane was landing yesterday in Tel Aviv, I heard the voice of the Lord speak into my innermost being saying, you have come under the jurisdiction of Michael the Archangel. Glorious land that God is himself married unto. You remember the story Jesus shared of a man who made a deliberate decision to abandon Jerusalem and he was going down, going through Jericho and fell among the robbers and they robbed him of everything. They stripped him naked and they took away everything that he had with himself. Because he made a willful choice to spurn the presence of God. Jerusalem is where God dwells, the presence of the Almighty. And he chose to go to Jericho, the land that was under curse. And you know how striking it is that Jesus presents in that story a priest and a Levite. And both of them chose not to help this man who really needed help. And Jesus presents in a story, in, in a masterful stoke, the Good Samaritan. A mongrel breed that the pious religious Jews hated. He presents himself as the Good Samaritan. You know, many places in the New Testament, how amazing is Jesus' teaching? When he says to the Jews, you know, he was talking to the Jews who were merely religious. Jews who were only arrogant of their heritage. Jews who were only proud that they belonged to Abraham, but they had nothing more than that to offer unto God. They turned the living God into a dead religion. Prophet Jeremiah laments by saying, they have dug themselves cisterns that cannot hold water. They have abandoned me, the source, the living, ever-flowing fountain of life. They chose their dead religion. That is why, you know, Jesus on two places, he says, uh, Prophet uh, Elijah was sent to the widow of Zarephath. Why uh, the prophet healed only leper Naaman? Weren't there many other lepers in Israel? You know, he cites these two examples 
in his uh, teaching. And we know these two people, the widow and Naaman. They were heathens. And he was addressing the religious Jewish people, people who had turned Yahweh into a dead religion. You know, Yahweh is not a religion. Yahweh is a living God. His presence pulsates through your whole being. You radiate His glory. So that, you know, that was so sarcastic and yet profound at the same time. When Jesus is presenting these two people, the widow of Zarephath and Naaman, who was a leper, the Syrian commander-in-chief of the armies, they had nothing to bring on the table. They could not offer unto God of Israel anything. They couldn't boast of the glorious covenant. They couldn't talk about the legacy of amazing patriarchs. They had no promise made unto them. They couldn't talk about the glory. They couldn't talk about the apostles. They couldn't talk about a very special relationship that they enjoyed. Jesus presents these two people and he says, God chose to reveal himself merciful unto them. When you, in your arrogance and in your pride, you turn God into a dead religion. Let me tell you, he will abandon you and walk away from you. He lives with the lowly and broken-hearted people. Hallelujah. Let's not boast. Let's not be, be prideful of any other thing except that Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of Glory, He chose us even before He laid the foundation of the universe in Him. And He adopted us in His glorious family. And we belong to Him. And it is because of what He did on the cross of Calvary that we embraced and it is imputed unto our accounts. Hallelujah. As I stay for the next 10, 11 days here in Israel, I'll be... Um, I'll be more often on, online and I'll be sharing with you the mighty, glorious, wonderful spiritual nuggets that God has placed upon my heart. May you have a great day or the evening or the latter part of the day today, wherever you are. And may the Lord Almighty bless you. May He open up His Word like never before. May you see the glorious things that are underlined in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for your daughter, Taida Harvey. I pray, Father, that your blessing will come upon the native people, all the tribes. Father, they are the seed of Abraham. They are the Jewish people. Father, may there be a great awakening taking place among them. I bless Brother Kamal Rai. I pray for Anand Koker. I pray for Brother Sachin Varma. I pray for Titus. I pray for Sunny. I pray for all these people who are showing up and who may see the message and hear the word little later. I pray, Father, for your blessing. May this day be punctuated by your supernatural presence. We love you. We adore you, Yeshua HaMashiach. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah.